Okay, let's walk through a couple of the common zone methods and just highlight some of the issues. This is the polar page. Where you, the nice thing about this is it's pretty simple. You just plug in your max heart rate and highest thing I've seen this year is 166. So plug that in and it'll automatically do your zones. And it's got a nice little slider here as you as you slide it'll change your zones for you. Um, my daughter's up around I mean she's up at the she's actually above the max um, over 210 but the highest I've seen is about 166. So that's going to put my this break point between zone 1 and zone 2 my aerobic threshold at about 100 and the thing with using a max heart rate is it doesn't have any idea on what's happening with my low end physiology. So it actually does an okay job with estimating where my uh, top of my zone four is. So for my higher intensity training, that it seemed to do an okay job for me. And if we, if we go back to when I was younger, I could get to about 173 pretty easily. Eh, it's okay. It would get me in, for, for that zone four, it would get me, um, get me close. The challenge is, if you look at the width of z these zones, they're, they're very wide. And you'll, you'll get, uh, you're in different domains in the zones. The other challenge is most, most athletes are going to tend to sit a little above, at or above the top of the zone, because they're going to think it's better. So using this top-down method and then applying our standard psychology is going to have us training a little too hard, uh, most of us. So the other method is, this is, this is we're, on the, we're on the Garmin side here, is Garmin does it a little, a little better. They take 220 minus your age, and then they take a percentage of that. So I'm 53. 220 minus 53 is going to be 167. So um, and then they're going to take 70% of that. And they're going to have me breaking uh, this, this aerobic threshold. They're going to tell me to look for that around 117. And that will be the difference between my zone 1 and my zone 2. It's okay. But I know that on the bike, I'm actually breaking a little below that. About 10 beats below that, maybe 5 beats below that. But it's more accurate than using uh, just the top down because they've adjusted for age a little bit. Now, the thing is, if you're a smaller athlete or a larger athlete and you're not the size of an athlete that's kind of in the middle of human distribution, I'm, I'm pretty average in terms of my size and stuff, these, these won't work very well for you. So for smaller athletes, uh, particularly if you're a runner, uh, very well developed aerobically, or a smaller female athlete where maybe you have a strength limiter. Some of these, some of these methods won't be as accurate as just dialing in the breathing. What they can do is they can point you in the right direction. So I mentioned freel zones in the first clip. So let's let's have a look how they do. So the freel zones, we're going to enter my threshold heart rate, and this would be the threshold. This would be the heart rate that you sustain in the last. Uh, 20 minutes of a 30 minute best effort time trial. What's my average heart rate for that? And, and by taking the last 20, you don't you miss the first 10 minutes where the heart rate's kind of coming up. And this this works okay. Uh, you know it, 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 but the challenge here is that it gives me a zone two that's 121 to 134 beats. So again, it, it, it works pretty well on the threshold. Uh, heart rate, these higher intensity things. But if I'm sitting 121 to 134 beats and telling myself that I'm doing steady training, I'm not. Have a look at what my lactate is doing at 124 beats. That's the max heart rate for a 10 minute step at 220 watts. It's 2.4. I'm in my heavy domain. I'm doing a tempo workout. I'm not doing the type of workout I want in my zone two see this a lot um, I, I would say it's probably your default it's probably your default training is you're training more intensely than you realize 
And if you use the perception, the feeling, this, this first deepening, you're going you're gonna to realize that. Now, you might not like it because what it's going to tell you is it's going to tell you that you have to train much less intensely to get those moderate domain um, adaptations that you want. So we're going to cancel this because I happen to have my real zones with my lower break, break points below it. So we don't want to apply that and mess up all my zones in my training peaks account here. So another thing I mentioned is while you're trying to figure things out is the uh, this submax calculator that's in the training zone thread the training that I put on Twitter you'll see me reference this and this is put together by Alan Cousins who's a great follow if you aren't following him already so what I did here again uh, I'll talk you through some of the mistakes you might make because I make them myself I took the max heart rate I've seen uh, this year and it was an uphill it was out to Zwift I did some progressive aerobic work at the bottom of the climb and in the last K I just hit the gas until I, I lost interest and it was 166 uh, and then I took my resting heart rate, seated resting in the morning, about 50. Uh, best, lowest heart rate using my aura ring overnight is going to be closer to 42. So again, the highest you've ever seen with the lowest you've ever seen because we tend to do that as triathletes. Let's start there. And it has me breaking at about 120. Now, as we said before, comparing to the lactate, and by breaking, I mean this first lactate turn point between zone one and zone two. That's going to be probably too high for setting the zone. But one of the tips that Alan gives us is if you want a flat cycling heart rate, you'd have to take a flat cycling max. Now, in that case, it's probably going to be closer to 155. I haven't done it. And the other thing is... My resting is not my sleeping. Maybe it's just sitting in the morning on the couch. Let's recalculate. It gets us closer. So now it's got the break point at about 115. Still a little bit high, but not too high. The issue comes with within my steady zone. And because I haven't dialed it in using lactate, the top of my steady zone is not in my moderate domain. It's the same issue I had with the freel zones, although it's not as big an issue. So if I'm doing moderate domain training, I want to keep my heart rate, my heart rate under 120. Remember, I'm 53. Your, your break points, if you're a lot younger than me, are likely to be higher. And let me illustrate. So my, my range for steady training as an elite athlete was 128 to 133. Uh, so it was higher. So over the years, it's moved down a little bit on me. And what I'm trying to do now is work it back up, ideally, uh, from the bottom up. But if I, if I target, if, if I don't do the bottom up, I'm going to be doing all my training in the heavy domain. I'm going to be doing a lot more tempo than I realize, regardless of what the method is telling me. So be aware of that. Dial into that sensation, that first deepening of breath. And let that hopefully get your training on target for you.